They State started uh, 40 years ago in a farm, a guy called um, Don Lowndes. He was a bare knuckle boxer and he had all sorts of hobbies and one of his hobbies was a herd of deer. He had his own private herd of deer. Getting towards retirement and Don needed a tranquilizer gun and he couldn't find one and such was the guy that he decided to make his own. And this led from one thing to another, an association with uh, some air gun people and they started making air tranquilizer guns. So they made eight of those and they realised they saturated the entire market for tranquilizer guns in the UK. So they decided, what else can we do? Well, we could do an air rifle. So they started producing a compressed air rifle. And this is probably in about 75. And it trickled and bounced off the ground and did okay, but nothing major, until they started winning competitions. At which point, the people started to sit up and take notice. And prior to them winning competitions, they'd been quite expensive. They needed charging gear. And the question was, they're how much money? You need what to fill them? Oh, I can't be bothered. But once they started winning competitions, it's how much are they and what do I need to fill them? Same question, different emphasis. And they started to take off. My family is manufacturing shotguns since 1922. My grandfather started, my father has developed the business and myself. Tony Bilas uh, invited me to have a look uh, to the Day State uh, products and I was so much admired from the technology, from the innovation. It's very interesting also the very big power they was able to transfer to uh, in, in air guns that uh, of course uh, is still a strong point of the Day State. The very advanced design that uh, once we have compared with everybody in the market it was much more advanced that I decided to uh, accept their offer and uh, finance uh, the company, the state. We have uh, uh, invested in technology and we have uh, tried to uh, use our knowledge in order to support the state in the production segment. We've been in this new factory one year, it's a year last week. And basically what happened, we ran out of room in our old factory. We loved it. It was a relic from the Second World War. It was actually a relic from the American Army in the Second World War because it was an ex-US Army manufacturing, munitions manufacturing base uh, from um, 1944 landings. And that's what we inherited. We ended up these concrete floors and concrete roofs, and it was a beautiful factory. But we ran out of room. Our sales were at the point where, where the factory was dictating what we could and couldn't do. So we needed to move and it was a big decision to move. So we moved into a more modern unit. Um, one of the things that made me smile towards the end of it was that we were, didn't have so many orders coming in from the US that they couldn't actually put the shipping crates together inside the factory, there wasn't room. So they were assembling them in the car park. And British weather being British weather, we were half, almost having to wait for dry days before we could ship out to the US. It was an absurd situation. But we're in a much better place here with more modern layout than we had before. When we produce a part, our production philosophy, all the parts that we manufacture, tolerances and measurement are respected 100%. In that way, we are sure that we can improve the, the quality of our production and of our products. The main feature of this machinery is that being so big, it is very, very stable and it can ensure to us a really high quality and respect of tolerances. For the most sophisticated parts, we need all this tool in order to produce, for example, a bridge block. We are able to produce it without changing the position of it, but changing only the tools. In this way, ensure a better quality in terms of measurement and tolerances. We have done a lot because our company in uh, Italy is, is ISO 9001 certified. We, we know what the state needs and uh, we receive from the state the input about what to do. As I mentioned before, the state uh, has been always very advanced in design. 
Of course, uh, matching also the Italian design, uh, we have been able to complete their work. The product gets a mutual benefit. A benefit from the consistency, knowledge of the English tradition, and a benefit from the Italian innovation and design. The American gun market is obviously there for everybody who wants to make a gun to sell into, and it's a hard market to get involved in. It's very mature and people know what they want. Fortunately, Daystate fell up, uh, did one show. It did, fell upon a US agent when it was exhibiting at the uh, SHOT Show in Florida. And this young company was called Air Guns of Arizona. And it did an exclusive tie-up with Air Guns of Arizona really back in the early days, 30 years ago. And that tie-up resulted Daystate having exposure in the American market. And over the years, uh, Guns of Arizona has taken a huge amount of day states and usually somewhere between a quarter to a third of day states production. That's been pretty consistent all the way through. Obviously back in the early days, you know, quarter was five guns and nowadays it's an awful lot more than that. But AOA has been a part of day state for 30, 30 something years. We found our market niche with high-end pre-charged air guns and we found that we needed some unique selling features to sell these into the American market. They needed to be small, relatively compact, but above all powerful. And power is what sells in the US market. Accuracy is taken as a given. You don't produce a gun which is powerful and not accurate, but nobody ever asks you for an accurate gun. They expect an accurate gun. So that was part of the philosophy of design. So we're building rifles which are probably more powerful than our competitors, uh, as accurate as any match rifle out there and yet is designed really as a hunting rifle. And what we tend to say to people is our rifles are hunting rifles. If you want to take one and enter it into a world championship, you stand a very good chance. It's not designed as a target rifle, but hey, we came second in last year's field target world championship in New Zealand. So not a bad result for a hunting rifle. Well, it's 11 years since we started doing our electronic rifles. Hard to imagine. A lot of people think it only came out yesterday. It feels like that to us. But 11 years ago, we started on the scheme with Harper Engineering and doing the electronic rifles. We did a tie-up with them, and we've developed through the range ever since. And these electronic guns, we see as a big future for Daystate. And that's shown in Pulsar, which we're just launching into the market right now, with its three different power settings, all of which are regulated through the electronics. But we haven't neglected the mechanical range because with mechanical guns, mechanical PCPs, we're able to go to much higher power. And that's useful, again, for the American market. Our Wolverine 303 has been a resounding success in the American market. We now we have two models, the Wolverine 303 itself, the A-type Wolverine, and also now the highlight version with the carbon fibre bottle, which reduces the weight and increases the shot count to over 20 shots per charge. So you've got a 100 foot-pound thousand feet per second with a 50 grain pellet would you believe shooting out to 100 120 yards so you've got lovely accuracy great power and a unique gun designed for the american market as you have seen they state as a increase the number of product they are renewing the line. I was, uh, for example, very much pleased after the shot show because some of our competitors really phoned to me and says that uh, the new Pulsar, for example, they consider a new uh, innovation in the market, a real new innovation. So I don't see any limited moment for the state. So the future development, what's Day State working on now? Well, I can't tell you everything, otherwise somebody would shoot me. But I, uh, I can tell you that we're working on different versions of the Pulsar, which you can see, and we're working on the Pulsar design philosophy because we like the ballpark format, we always have done, and uh, we think it's, it's more than just a novelty, it's something that fits into a niche. We're able to get high power, short, small rifle, very compact, and it's very easy for a shooter to shoot. It fits, uh, even standing shooting, you know, off-hand shooting, is much easier with a compact rifle. So we're working on those developments.